Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. It's time for yet another quick AMD news update. Well, hopefully quick. I think last time I said that the video ended up being 15 minutes long, but I promise this one will be quicker. AMD are today making a bunch of software announcements relating to their GPUs, and normally, well, I wouldn't have bothered covering this except for one reason. AMD have announced Fidelity FX Super Resolution 2.0. Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Gigabyte and their brand new range of Intel B660 motherboards. A particular favorite of ours is the B660M Aorus Pro AX, as this micro ATX board really does pack it all. A powerful VRM comprised of a dozen 60 amp power stages, complete with impressive looking and very effective aluminum heat sinks. There's loads of USB ports on the I.O. panel, Wi-Fi 6, Intel 2.5 gigabit LAN, and plenty of onboard expansion options. Also, Gigabyte has a competition running right now to win a free Aorus upgrade, so please do check the link in the video description. So let's dive straight into this one, with everything AMD are saying about FSR 2.0, which admittedly isn't much at this stage, but importantly, we are learning at least something. The big news is that FSR 2.0 will be a temporal upscaling solution, which differs greatly from FSR 1.0, a spatial solution. FSR 2.0 going temporal brings it much more in line with technologies like Nvidia's DLSS and Intel's upcoming XESS, which both use temporal data to enhance the upscaling process and simply give more data points to the algorithm. By switching from spatial to temporal, FSR 2.0 should deliver much higher visual quality than FSR 1.0. Now, FSR 1.0 was still useful at resolutions like 4K, especially when using the highest ultra quality mode that it offered, and it could get close to DLSS without matching it at times. But quite simply, the image quality DLSS was able to provide at lower resolutions and lower quality levels was much better. Think at 1080p or when using the performance mode. There were also some elements that DLSS handled better, such as foliage, and FSR could struggle when the game's built-in TAA implementation was poor like we saw in Marvel's Avengers. Many of these areas to image quality should be improved with the switch from spatial to temporal. AMD claims FSR 2.0 should deliver similar or better than native image quality, and that includes optimized anti-aliasing, suggesting FSR 2.0 will replace the game's built-in AA when activated, like DLSS. However, saying that something produces a better than native image quality is a bit of a buzzword these days. We've seen Nvidia claim this countless times, and it isn't always the case in practice. Does AMD mean better than native when looking at static scenes, in motion, at lower resolutions? We'll have to explore that when we get more information and hands-on time with the technology, but at the very least, they are expecting FSR 2.0 to deliver better image quality than FSR 1.0 at all resolutions and presets. Another key aspect to FSR 2.0 is that it does not require dedicated machine learning or AI hardware to run. In fact, when we asked AMD, they said that AI was not used in creating the algorithm. So in other words, FSR 2.0 is not based on AI like DLSS is. Some people will use this fact to immediately discredit AMD because AI is awesome and all of that, but the reality is that DLSS in its current form is only using a generalized AI algorithm to enhance the upscaling pipeline. That same algorithm is applied to all games. It is possible to create a generalized temporal upscaling algorithm without AI. Epic Games have done so in Unreal Engine 5, for example. It's just a question of how good it is, and we don't really have an idea of that yet without testing it. AMD will be sharing more on how FSR 2.0 works at a GDC presentation next week. However, the benefit to not using AI is that AMD is able to create a solution that works across a wide range of products. AMD are saying FSR 2.0 will work on AMD GPUs and competitor GPUs. However, they didn't go into specifics here on what GPUs would be supported or what instruction sets are required. Intel's XESS, for example, is AI accelerated, and it supports two pipelines, one using XMX acceleration specific to Intel Arc GPUs, and one using DP4A instructions. DP4A is widely supported across current generation hardware, but not so much on older cards like the highly popular Polaris series, RX 580s and so on. If AMD's solution is able to use an even more widely supported instruction set than DP4A, this would be a huge bonus for owners of older GPUs, 
but we'll have to hear more at GDC to see the specific requirements for FSR 2.0 and how it works. Hopefully it will still be an open source solution. We very much expect this to be the case given AMD's other technologies. AMD were willing to show image quality for FSR 2.0, but only in a single scene in the game Deathloop and only as a static image. So there are heaps of caveats here, but let's just take a closer look. AMD provided native resolution at 4K, FSR 1.0 at 4K using the quality mode, and FSR 2.0 at 4K using the quality mode. FSR 2.0 clearly delivers better image quality than FSR 1.0, even when using the quality mode based on this single, possibly cherry-picked and ideal sample. The sign in the center of the screen is sharper using FSR 2.0, and the brickwork to the left has more fine detail, much closer in quality to what you see in the native image. FSR 2.0 also has telltale signs of temporal upscaling and the whole better than native image quality thing in really fine details. Look at these balloons in the top right. The fine wires at the bottom are non-existent using FSR 1.0 as the upscaling tech just doesn't have enough information to restore those details. They are present in the native image but are a little bit aliased, while FSR 2.0 shows them nice and clearly. This is a similar effect to what we usually see with DLSS in these instances, so that's pretty promising. The benefit FSR 2.0 is bringing to this scene is even more apparent when looking at AMD's performance mode comparison. FSR 1.0 looks kind of bad here, especially for any fine detail. Look at the way this rail and window were handled in the upper left. FSR 1.0 is very jagged and clearly lacking in detail as it simply can't reconstruct these areas well from a single 1080p frame. But FSR 2.0 looks pretty similar to native, aside from some obvious differences to shadows in these captures. Not sure if that's related to FSR 2.0 or not. Again, all we have are these images. Now let's talk about the caveats to what is being shown here. The first is obviously that this is only one sample in one game. FSR 1.0 quality did vary quite a bit depending on the title. Some games did not work well with the technology, others were decent. Same with DLSS, where in some games it does largely produce a better than native image, while in others it can reduce and blur fine detail. Deathloop could be one of the better examples for FSR 2.0, and AMD chose not to directly compare it to DLSS in this game, which is available as an option in Deathloop. The second is that we're looking at a static image. It's not even a video of a static scene, it's literally a screenshot. Static scenes with no movement captured as screenshots are extremely favorable to temporal upscaling solutions because they hide all the issues in motion. The word temporal in the technology indicates this is how the data is collected for upscaling, temporally over time. And this is also how artifacts come about. If the scene changes very little from one frame to the next, this is a perfect set of data to use for temporal upscaling. But if the image changes, it gets a lot harder for temporal upscaling to deliver like native image quality. We've seen this numerous times in the past with DLSS and other techniques. In several games, DLSS was prone to heavy ghosting. This has been cleaned up to some degree with newer DLSS revisions, but may be present itself with FSR 2.0, we're just never going to know from these sorts of screenshots. Similar with shimmering and moiré effects for fine details, this can be quite noticeable when using lower quality upscaling modes in motion. Nothing we have shown today shows how FSR 2.0 will handle motion, and this is arguably the most important important factor to image quality. As expected, AMD are also suggesting good performance gains, although again, we only have one single example, which shows Deathloop going from 53 FPS at 84K to 101 FPS using the performance FSR 2.0 mode. That's basically what we'd expect, but a sample of one is hard to make any judgments over. With all those caveats though, I am pretty excited to see how FSR 2.0 compares to DLSS and XESS as well in games. And what AMD is saying here is promising, but it all hinges on performance and image quality at the end of the day. I'm also curious to see how a non-AI based approach can handle this problem, especially if going down this path allows it to work on a far greater range of hardware. So many questions and so little answers, hopefully we'll learn a lot more at next week's GDC presentation ahead of a full release in Q2 2022. Okay, enough about FSR 2.0, I've probably analyzed that one to death given the limited information we ended up with. Let's now talk about Radeon Super Resolution, which was first announced at CES 2022. Today, RSR will be available as part of AMD's new AMD Software Adrenaline Edition package, so you can download it and try it out for yourself, provided you have an RX 5000 series GPU or newer. Unfortunately, AMD aren't offering this feature for owners of their still very popular Polaris GPUs and older, like the RX 580. 
I asked AMD whether there was a technical reason for this. After all, FSR 1.0, which is the technology being used for RSR, does work on Polaris GPUs. And the answer I got wasn't very satisfactory. It seems AMD just haven't bothered or gotten around to supporting Polaris yet or are trying some artificial segmentation, which isn't great. Hopefully they do support older GPUs in the future, they didn't rule it out, but only RDNA cards and newer are supported at the moment. Anyway, Radeon Super Resolution is a driver-based implementation of FSR in the same vein as NVIDIA Image Upscaling, which we looked into at the end of last year. While FSR is an implementation in the game itself and is applied before the final effects and UI are rendered, RSR is applied to the entire game image and doesn't require developer integration. The trade-off here is RSR supports more games, basically any game, but at a lower image quality as it will upscale things like the UI, which ideally shouldn't be upscaled. AMD's RSR implementation does have maybe one advantage that NVIDIA Image Upscaling doesn't have. The big one is you can apply it on a per game basis within the driver settings. Bizarrely, NVIDIA didn't allow you to do that, making it clunky to only apply to certain titles. However, using RSR is still a multi-step process. First, you need to enable RSR in the driver, either globally or for the game you want to upscale. Then separately, you need to lower the game's output resolution in the game itself. In a perfect world, this would be a magic one-click button like FSR, but this would be very difficult to get working across a wide range of titles, so what AMD has attempted here is, I guess, all they could realistically do. We'll be testing RSR in a separate video coming soon. Originally, I was going to test it here in this video slot, but with the FSR 2.0 news, it's probably better off in its own video. So look out for performance and image quality analysis from us shortly. Those are the really big announcements AMD has for us today. The latest Radeon drivers do also include a few other neat features like now supporting image sharpening for media playback, updates to AMD Link and so on. But RSR support now in the driver you can get right now and FSR SR 2.0 coming soon are really the big stories today. So anyway, that's it for this brief news update. Feels like I've been just covering AMD news at the moment. Previously, we had AMD's announcement of seven new CPUs coming in April. If you missed that announcement, that's out in the channel now for you to check out. We also had Threadripper Pro 5000 news last week. But yeah, I think that's it for the AMD news for now. We're now just waiting for some of these features and bits of hardware to be released so we can test it. Very excited for all that stuff. So definitely subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss anything. We also have our Patreon and Floatplane accounts if you want to support us directly and support independent hardware testing and analysis. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.